Welcome to the David Bradley Show with your host, David Bradley. Hey, how are everybody doing today? It's going to be a crazy day, a little bit of fun. We're going to try and cover as much content as we can today. Um, I kind of skipped a day. Well, skipped a week. Uh, I had a cancellation. And, of course, when people want to go make more money, I cannot say, well, y'all got to be on my show. You can forget about making money, but I'm not going to do that. I let people make money. It's is, it's the music industry. It's the entertainment industry. It's everything out there. Somebody's going to make money doing something entertaining people, and I love every minute of it. All right, guys, y'all stay tuned because right now we're going to talk to J.D. Williams, who is an awesome songwriter and an author, and she is actually my first author that I've ever had on the show. Welcome, J.D. Well, thank you. I'm so glad to be here. How are you doing today? I'm wonderful. Awesome. So, what do you think about it? Wow. Well, I'm I'm honored to be your first author. First <laughs> of all, that's fantastic. Wow. I love it. I mean, it's a. Uh, I'm going to try and I want to cover all areas of entertainment, and okay. people love reading books. They do. They do. And women's romance, that's one of the biggest. Um, oh, God, don't get there. me started. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, well, I don't think your book is like a Harlequin romance, though. No, it's not like that. And I, sh- I don't want to say women's romance. It's a romance book for yeah. everybody. I have all kinds of readers, but yes, it is. It's not quite Harlequin. It's a I do plan on reading it. <laughs> I'm serious. I do plan on reading it. Well, good, good. All right. So I'm going to get into, I want people to know you. So okay. you was actually raised up in Lincoln, Nebraska. I was, yes. In the Midwest. Yep. A lot of snow. A lot of snow out there. Cold, windy, great people. Solid salt of the earth. And I love it out there. Yeah. Cool. But it's cold. It's oh very, yeah. Very cold. Yes. I can imagine. And a lot of daggum snow, man. I don't see how y'all got around. I know. A lot of ice too, but yes, it's cold and yeah. So yes. how long did you stay in Nebraska? I live, I grew up there, grew up in Lincoln and graduated from the University of Nebraska there. So I was there for about 22 years. Oh man. Yeah. I don't see how you stood it. <laughs> <laughs> well then, you know, I moved someplace colder, if you can believe it or not. I moved to Minneapolis. Oh man. Right after that. I know. I, I went colder, oh, believe it or God. not. I know. I, I don't know. see how you do it. I couldn't do it. I, I mean, know. that's, that, that's just something I couldn't do. Yeah. Cause I, mean, I freeze to death just here. I like right now it's cold outside to me. Yeah, it's, it is to me now too, which well, is why I moved here eventually. But yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, how long you been in Nashville? I moved here in 98. So quite a while now. Yeah, that's a long time. Yeah, I love it. Love it here. And I thought it was funny because before we got on the air and everything, we was talking and we actually kind of missed each other in certain circles and as i thought it was funny as i'll get out but. i know we know some of the same people but we were never quite met but yeah we know some of the same people in the same music world and this town can be so small sometimes it's oh awesome. yeah it yeah. is it's weird yeah because um some of the people i've known down there and then i'll have guests on and they're like oh well you know so and so and i'm like yeah uh been knowing that <laughs> anyway for a long time <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but eventually if you start talking about somebody you're going to eventually know somebody or they know somebody you've all you know that know the same people or worked at the same club or something yeah it's pretty it's pretty great it's 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 very unique atmosphere yeah everybody's close-knit and some people don't understand that because when you get into the country music side of it there's more close-knit people branching in together and helping each other out and doing all kinds of things. Oh, exactly. Yeah. In the rock world, you don't get that. Right. It's almost like a dog eat dog. Right. Well, actually, Ted Nugent wrote a song about that. But anyway. (laughs) Well, and that's, you know, when I first moved here, there were so many people trying to help me. And that that was wonderful. And that's one of the things I love about this community, about Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. I've always loved that. And especially when I was doing Lights and Sound, I'd always have people that actually had done it longer than me and they would give me little pointers here and there and oh dude you really got to follow this and you got to do this and i'm sure it's the same in the songwriting Mm -hmm. oh exactly yeah go talk to this person try this you know just other writers or other people just all kinds of advice especially guitar players and just you know try this or do this listen to as much as as you can and um hooking me up with some great uh 
people to help me learn how to play, good guitar instructors, just all kinds of things in this town. It's just really been wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. When did you start playing guitar? Uh, it was actually, I was living in uh, Minneapolis and I started there. I started when I was older. And so it was probably, I'd been living there about, I moved there when I was 24 and I'd been there for a few years. So um, I was played there for about five years. And then when I came here, I just, I continued to learn how to play. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's, and I love it. Yeah. So you just picked up the guitar one day and it just bit the bug. I did. I got the bug and, um, I, I don't go, I don't call myself a guitar player cause there are great guitar players in this town. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. you can open the front door, throw a quarter and you can hit one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. I mean, they're just, uh, you know, I, I chunk out some chords is what I usually say, but, uh, as a songwriter, but, um, it's the instrument that I love, you know, and mm -hmm. what I love to, what I love to listen to. So. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Well, I want to get back into some more stuff. Here. Okay. So, when did you start singing? I mean, on your little bio, it just says you started singing and you started singing with your sisters, but it didn't really say what age you were. Oh gosh, we were young. So, um, my sisters and I would put on old fifties and sixties records. I mean, we were probably about seven or eight, my twin sister and I, and we would sing harmonies to them. So like Mr. Sandman or the Andrew sisters. And we, I, we were young, so probably eight or nine and we would all learn the harmony parts. I was usually high harmony. My twin sister would be the alto and we would make up little dance routines and perform them for my family. And of course, you know, they would all laugh, but, um, that's when I learned to sing, started singing and learned, started to sing harmony. And it was, I tried out, I was in the third grade. I auditioned for a musical and was, was selected. That was the first time I ever found out I could, I could sing. Oh, no that's idea. awesome. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. I was scared to death. <laughs> I it can was, imagine. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> and, um, so I started singing in choirs from that moment on and singing in choirs and, um, show choirs and singing and dancing yeah. from that moment on. Yeah. I'll say we had a thing. Um, I went to Jerry Baxter school down in Nashville and they had this little play thing and I don't know how in the heck I even got involved in it. I can't remember. Not one bit. And uh, we just took and they had me sing Yankee Doodle Dandy. <laughs> and it was supposed to have been with a piano, but I could never come in on cue. So they just took the piano away and I'm sitting there standing there just by myself singing the song, no accompaniment whatsoever. A cup accompaniment. I can't even say that word. <laughs> anyway. You sang it a cappella. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's yeah. the word. Yeah. And uh, everybody was like, oh, that was so great. That was awesome. You should take up singing. And I'm like, yeah, nah. <laughs> I couldn't even come in with the with the piano. What makes you think I can come in with a band? Yeah, yeah. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. It's terrifying at first, but yeah, you get you get used to it. Yeah. So who, who influenced you early? Oh, gosh. Was it um, your dad, your mom, or? My dad um, introduced me to all kinds of artists. Elvis, Hank Sr. Oh, dude, uh, there's some good yeah, artists there. Yeah, the Statler Brothers. He liked a lot of harmony groups. Uh, the first singer I ever remembered that he introduced me to was Teresa Brewer. Mm -hmm. I don't remember who that was, but he loved her. And then my mom's uh, family, they were um, instrumentalists. They all played in a band, and they all uh, performed out. And my mom's family, uh, my, my my grandma actually liked uh, Johnny Cash, mm -hmm. um, Andy Williams, a lot of people like that. So oh, yeah. a real wide group of people. But I love Fleetwood Mac, uh, Billy Joel. Um, one of the singers I absolutely loved was Olivia Newton-John, though. That was oh, yeah. she was such an idol for me. I up. love her voice. Oh, oh so God, pure and just yeah, just beautiful. And just in beautiful the video, voice. I think every. <laughs> every teenage boy back then the whole let's get physical video yes, yeah. i mean i was i think everybody was watching that one yeah they, they were yes and yeah it, but it was it was still good it mm -hmm. was a good actual song good video and you think back now on the, i don't know if you do it or not but i always think back on things that i seen when i was younger mm -hmm. and versus presently like the audio video quality and all that stuff they were kicking butt back then. Yeah. They really were. Yeah. Because everything they've got now is just, it's so high tech and they can go in, you can do a music video anywhere now. Just use your phone. It'll be good. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know everybody thinks about with Olivia, Olivia Newton-John, the grease scene, you yeah. know, and all that. I mean, a lot of. Lot oh, of the black stretch that. pants. Man. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Well, she looked fabulous. So, yeah. She did. Yeah, that was there's awesome. nothing like it. Spandex was the thing in the 80s, man. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. I know. Take it. Take everybody back to Oh, 80s. yeah. I know. Yeah. I looked good in a pair of turquoise spandex. <laughs> Do you have a picture of that somewhere? No. Yeah. Okay. 
I'll tell you what I'll do. Yeah. Hey, uh, hand me that picture. Oh, no. Yeah, I got to show Wait, you this. We, okay. We've I ain't showing this on something. camera, but I'll show this to you. Okay, we got to see this. Uh-oh. <laughs> My mother took this picture. Oh, no. And this was 1986. Oh, my gosh. Back in the hair metal days when I first <laughs> started doing lights and sound all over Nashville. That is awesome. No, that actually, that's, that's the third year of me doing lights and sound in Nashville. That is fantastic. Had the spiked hair, the eyeliner, mm -hmm. the whole nine yards, and the Bon Jovi red jacket. Yeah. That was a must item. Oh, my gosh. I love Bon Jovi. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love you have a picture of that. Handy. I, I don't know how it survived all this time. I don't. <laughs> and my daughter found it. Okay. <laughs> I think she put it on something a long time ago, but yeah. she stuck it on there one minute and I started doing all this stuff. Yeah. It was hilarious. But anyway, I, think I digress. <laughs> <laughs> so third grade, you're doing musicals, yeah. Musicals. Mm -hmm. I did musicals too in, in high school, yeah. Yeah. And then you also did uh you went to college with music. I did. I was actually a music major for a little while. I studied a little opera and mm -hmm. all that. And um then I started singing professionally um in Kansas City, did some uh, yeah. some show choir work and then uh Got a lucky break and moved to Minneapolis and then started touring with a pop band, um, pop cover band, and toured all over the Midwest, upper Midwest. Do you remember the names of the bands? The, the band, yes, it was KMD and the Rave. That was the big band that I oh. toured with. Yeah. The guys were out of Arizona. They were great. Really, yeah. Really, a lot of fun. So great group of guys. So really sweet to me. I, awesome. I couldn't I couldn't even walk to the restroom without a chaperone. They were so <laughs> protective. It was so great. They were so sweet. That's a good way to go touring. It is. It is. A bunch yeah. of big brothers standing they over were, you. Yeah, they were. Yeah. You got to have that because mm -hmm. people are crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A lot of fun. We toured all over and had all kinds of great experiences, except the bus broke down one time in Grand Forks and on New Year's, and that was a little cold. So, yeah, But it was New Year's. Yeah, it was. And we were trying to go home, but it was... Didn't we, have a club or anything to hit or... We No, we were headed home, and I think we got the bus... The bus we were able to get the bus started working, but we didn't have heat going home. So oh, it was a man. little chilly, but other than that, we, we made it. So, yeah, but still, it was memorable. I mean, we had a lot of great <laughs> experiences. So, well, that's why they call it road trips. Exactly. You got to have the memories and yeah, exactly. all the crazy stuff happened to you. It, it's just awesome. It's yeah. a blast. Yeah. I think everybody ought to do it. Exactly. Oh, it's <laughs> a, you need, you need that experience. You do. Oh yeah. So what was your mama's family in the music industry? Well, they actually, um, my mom's, um, my, I was actually my uncle and be my aunt's husband mm. and, and hit their kids. They actually all played around live where they lived in a band and they all played. And it was so great to be around that experience and, and just the local club, local club or just local band. They would play, you know, as a family band mm. um, and they all played instruments and it was so much fun to go over to, to be at their um, so everything um, you grew up in was just, it was just all surrounded by music yeah, and people yeah. performing and yeah. And man, you got that bug real early. I did. Yeah, <laughs> I did. It was great. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. I love hearing stories like that, you know, cause a lot of people, they wait until later on in life cause you know, they don't have that experiences at home or anything right. and they actually go out and they seek it and then they've got to go through this and go through that. And I, I think it's a whole lot better if you're living it, mm -hmm. you know, it, it makes the experience so much more. Yeah. Right. It, it's crazy. Right. Oh, I, having a twin sister that I could harmonize with was great. We sang a lot. You together. got a twin. I have a twin. Yeah. So, no way. Yeah. So we, we sang together all the time. It was great. Wait a minute. Who's the evil one? <laughs> well, she's the older one. So she's yeah. Three minutes older and. Yeah. So she's more in trouble than you. She's she's the wiser. I'll just say she's, uh, yeah. she's, she's the wiser okay. one. I'll, I'll, okay, we're yeah. getting to the truth now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Man, yeah, I wouldn't know what to do with a twin. I well, just yeah, it's it's a lot of work. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, yeah. Especially poor, if your poor parents, parents were t with twins. Yeah, it's yeah. I feel for them. Did your parents dress you alike and all that stuff? They they did. Yeah. Initially. Oh God, I would kill my mom for that. <laughs> Like, yeah. dude, come on. I got my own style. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we rebelled eventually. We were like, no, I'm not wearing, we're not wearing the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, 
<laughs> look, mom, these suspenders don't look right on me. Uh, yeah. Was, she can wear them. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so you went to college, had music. Mm-hmm. Now, was your, the music the major at that? or I, I studied music for a little while, and then I actually switched majors and uh, studied. Um, I was pre-physical therapy for, for a little while, but I kept going back to music and dance. Um, but I ended up with a communication degree. But I sang with the University Show Choir, um, the Scarlet Cream, Cream Singers, yeah. and that's what led to uh, singing professionally. So, so you had a lot of decisions to make right there in college. I did. I did. Yeah. God, that would have been confusing to me. It, it, is, it is a hard decision to be in, in college and trying to decide what you want to do. It is. Well, yeah, because now they just get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, we did a little bit of that too, I will say. So this is. Did you yeah. start a trend? No. I, well, maybe. Yeah, we might have, <laughs> yeah, we might have started one. Yeah. <laughs> Lord. Yeah, we had, we did have a good time. So that's cool. Though. But I did graduate. So, yeah, I did hey, finish that. <laughs> I didn't go to college. Yeah. And well, that's OK. Well, I went to uh, Gallatin yeah. Volunteer College, whatever it's called over there. I did an intro to business and I was just like, Phew. yeah, everything they taught me was. Somebody that dropped out of high school, started this company, and now it's multi-million dollars. And I'm like, right. Why the hell am I going to college for? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, that that's true. That's awesome though. Scarlet and the Cream Singer. Yeah, there was it's the University Show Choir. Great group of people. I'm still friends with a lot of sing, of the singers in the group. So. Do they still have that going on? I, you know, I'm not positive if they do or not, but they that group can continued on for a long time. So, yeah. Yeah, because that uh, well, that movie come out with the the acapella. The, Oh, Pitch Perfect. Are you yeah. 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 I'd say whenever I see that movie and then somebody's talking about this is what we did in college, that automatically pops up in my head. Yeah. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. One of the groups, I, I when I moved to Minneapolis, I was in a group. We were a lot like that. Kind of, we were an acapella group like that. Yeah. Did y'all go in any battles? No, we didn't. No. I wonder when they started that crap. I don't, yeah, I, I wonder. I'm not sure. That's a good question. <laughs> So you graduated, mm -hmm. and then I've got wrote down here that you did production assistant. Yeah, so I worked for a video company in Minneapolis. That was the first thing I did. I moved. I, we did projects for the military ma mainly. So that was the the job I had when I first moved to Minneapolis. Kind of like training videos and stuff. Uh, we all kinds of stuff. So um, we did we did some commercial work, but then we also did just some general military stuff for some some clients. Yeah. Yeah. So. And that's definitely got an NDA on that one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> it was during that time that I auditioned for the pop uh, cover band. And so they asked me to join them. And so I, I left that production job to go on the road with the pop band. And we did that full time. So. Oh, cool. Fun. Yeah. Was that the same band you got stuck? Yeah. Yes. With? Yeah. It, it is the same band. Man. Yeah. And then I, at the same time, I started singing in pop recording groups. So I auditioned for the first pop uh, recording group that I was with. So what, uh, what kind of venues did y'all play? Did y'all play different? Yeah, we did. There was a, with the first group I was with, we were mainly a recording group. So we mm. were trying to get a record deal. And yeah. so we worked for that. And then I was in a second group, the same thing, trying to get a recording group, but recording deal. But we did actually play some clubs in downtown Minneapolis and we did some shows for like kids at high schools and things like that. We were a dance pop recording trio. Yeah. So. I don't see that going over in a biker bar. Yeah. No, uh -uh, no. Did so. you play a biker bar? I did with the pop cover band. So, and that wait, was, wait, 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 a pop cover band. Yes. In a bar. That, yes. So we, <laughs> we pulled up to a bar outside of, it was, this was so funny. We were outside of the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Oh, this has got a funny story yeah. all over. Well, it. we were, yes. So we, and our band was, like techno pop, like, um, Frankie goes to Hollywood, mm. Madonna. I mean, it was, we had electric drums. I mean, it was real techno pop. Yeah. I yeah. love that song. Yeah. Relax. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, <laughs> we played dance clubs and so we pulled into this bar and it was a biker bar and yeah. we went, Oh, where did they book us? I mean, it, we were expecting, we should have had like, you know, the fencing in front of the drummer. Cause we were terrified yeah. and we thought, Oh gosh, we're, we're in trouble. And we got up on stage and we started playing and 
literally, they're all sitting at the <laughs> tables with their beers, just staring at us. And I thought we're in trouble. And they started dancing and cheering. And by the end of the night, they were, I mean, the, they loved us. I mean, loved it. Oh, and that's cool. Yeah, it was really cool. And the next night, it was even more packed. They, and they were like, you guys are so different than anything we're used to hearing. Wait, wait, wait. wait. They yeah. booked you two nights? Yeah, they had us there from the whole week. That, and literally, we were like, we had, we had called our the booking agent the yeah. first night and said, we're in trouble. You got to, but they kept us there. And they lo- by the whole week, they loved us. <laughs> it was great. But literally, we thought we were in real trouble. We thought. Well, I can imagine because, yeah. I mean, like down at the. Uh, there's a club in Nashville that's just a biker bar and yeah. you drive your bikes around back and the women that would ride Harleys or, you know, riding on the back with their, you know, husband driving and all that stuff, they would get up and, you know, hip hop music comes on and stuff like that. They're the ones dancing, but the other guys, you know, with the big long beard sitting back, just drinking their beer and just watching them. And so I could see where that could happen, you know? Yeah. I don't, did y'all have like an old, old guy standing up dancing with y'all? They, they all were dancing. They just, yeah. I mean, the whole, all that of is them, crazy. They loved it. They, they, I think it was just because it was so different than it was, you know, the, <laughs> what they were used to and they, and they loved it. Well, so, usually they get like, you know, yeah. Southern rock bands. Yeah, and, that, and, 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 and yeah, that's, and we played as much rock as we knew. I and mean, we played all the rock covers that we knew but yeah we couldn't you know we y'all didn't play acdc though did no you? but we didn't do any of that i mean it was like yeah we still played our techno pop stuff and yeah. yeah and our madonna you know vogue and they loved it so. i'd have loved them in there to see that yeah. that would have been hilarious yeah. the first night was when we were kind of worried but it turned out to be a really fun week for us and then you got fans for life right yeah there. exactly yeah we had a great time a lot of fun. that is cool i love that <laughs> yeah so did y'all record anything or we did that. We did a, I know they did a, an album of, we did, they did originals too. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but I was only with that group for a, well, probably about a year, I think six months to a year. Cause that was with a pop recording group. And, um, we did some, uh, recording, um, uh, some pretty major recording yeah. at that time. And so I left to go to kind of focus on that. And I was doing some commercials and some other stuff at that time. And then, Oh, so you sprung over into acting too? Yeah, I was doing. Com- God, you're as busy I know, as I, I am. I, did, I know. I was just, you know, when you're, when you're an entertainer and creative, you kind of venture into all kinds of things. So I was doing some commercials and, um, and then I was with another, uh, that group, the first group fell apart. The first, and so I, joined another group was a three part group and we all wrote and played. And that's when I really started to focus on writing and playing guitar. And that was with that group. And, um, we actually worked to get a, a recording deal and had an offer. Um, and then one of the members wasn't happy with the, with where it was going. And so that it all kind of all fell apart. And during that time I was still writing and, uh, was in a little bit part, I had a bit part in a movie. And mm-hmm. it was at that time that I thought, you know, I'm, I'm really want to focus on songwriting. And that was when I made the decision to move to Nashville. So what was it about the songwriting that just kind of stuck out with you? Well, it's just the whole uh, aspect of putting the lyrics with music, you know, and that just intrigued me of my entire life. It was just what I I knew it was what I wanted to do from the time I was a little kid. Well, now some people are, some people are lyricists Mm -hmm. and some people are musically where they can build us. I can't even think of the name of it. Um, But they can put that music together that just fits just right. Yeah. Do you do a combination or do you do the words? I, at first I was lyrics, you know, I focused on lyrics, but I ha- I always had the melody. So I would right. do the lyrics and the melody and I'd work with someone to arrange it. And now I've gotten to a point where, um, based on the national number system and, and writing that way and working with a really good guitar, guitar instructor, I can finish the song myself. I can take what's in my head and, and finish it and just I, make it all come to life. Yeah. Come to, yeah. I can do both parts. I would, I love to work with other writers sir, and, yeah. you know, and because I think that brings, makes the songs better and it brings mm-hmm. another, um, aspect to your writing. Right. And, um, I would like to do more of that. You know, it's just finding the time to do that, but I love to work with other writers too. So who's some of the other writers that you've worked with so far? Um, a long, long time ago, I worked with a guy, but uh, Brandon Kinney in mm-hmm. town and he's, he's fabulous. Uh, again, I haven't, well, I haven't written, um, with anybody for a long time, but I worked on uh, with one of the songs I wrote, um, a guy by the name of Benji Kushner from back home. Yeah. Um, and he helped me write this song, Freight to Rome. That's um, oh, cool. um, one of them that I wrote. That's more rock. Yeah. Um, I wrote a little bit, quite a bit with him. And so, um, I would love to write with more people. So, oh yeah. Yeah. The newer think, stuff I've been doing has been by myself, but I'd love to write with more people. I say, I, when it comes to me, 
I can do like, I can do the hook. I can do the chorus. Yeah. I can do something catchy. But then I forget what I come up with if I don't write it down right then. Yeah. And then I later on, like a week or later or something like that, I'll get to looking at it. And I'm just like, ah, that's crap. Right? <laughs> you just throw it away. I'm done with it. But I just, I, I don't think I've wrote that many. Maybe one or two. That's about it. And then I never could put the music to it or anything. I'd have to have somebody else help me with that. I'm just, I got a buddy of mine, Coley. He helps out a lot with the show. And uh, he sits there and he, great on the guitar, man. I mean, he just wails on it. And he comes up, he might say, well, I'm going to sit down and write a song. And I'll be damned two hours later, he's done wrote a damn song. Yeah. And he'll do it every now and then on Facebook and play the song on Facebook, you know, and I'm like, Coley, you really need to go different avenues, man. You need to get all your stuff done. And uh, that's something I think, you know, some people don't know. Um, you might be able to shed some light on that. When you do a song and you've got it wrote, what are the proper avenues of making sure somebody doesn't steal your stuff? Well, you got you to gotta copyright it, obviously, and get it yeah. recorded and, and written. And I do that. So I send it to the copyright office. Um, and that's the main thing that I do. And then when you put <clears> it out there, I mean, you own that. I mean, if you put it out on a service. Um, so he's he's covered if he puts it on Facebook? Yeah, if you put it out there, I, I believe, um, and someone can correct me if I'm not right, but if you put it out there um, and it's copywritten, I, for, I always copyright it through the copyright, the federal copyright office. Right. But if you put it out there, um, and it's recorded and streamed or whatever, then you own that. Um, then, it, then it is, I believe, legally. I oh, see. That's something I, I didn't know. know. But someone may need to correct me if I'm not right about that. See, I didn't know that. Yeah. Because the last time somebody I knew wrote a song and I told them they needed to copyright it, and they told me, only thing I got to do is do a self-addressed envelope and put it in the mail. And once it goes through the mail system and comes back to me, I don't open it. Yeah, that that could be as well. That could be that could be true as well. That's what I was saying. Yeah. I didn't know. And don't open. I when I receive them back from the copyright office, I don't open them either. Yeah, yeah, they're sealed. But it's I I I send I send them out and put them through that yeah. that process. See, that's cool. Yeah, we're helping people now. <laughs> I hope so. I like yeah. it when we help people. <laughs> oh man, four part female. Yeah, so that was, we did, four, like you were talking about Pitch Perfect, we did, we sang, we arranged our own material. And, and well, see, I'm thinking female version of uh, Seven Bridges Road. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know the yeah, Eagle yeah. song. Oh, yeah. Come yeah. on. Yeah, it took me a minute. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking me back. Hey, I got to throw you a curve every now and then. <laughs> That's good. You got to do something. Somebody needs to. Okay. <laughs> focus, focus. Yeah, Come on, people. I know. I know. Oh, Lord. So when you went into the commercials, did you do any acting lessons or? I did a little bit in college, but you no, know, it was kind of cold. I went in. That's and, what I'm saying though. You covered so much in freaking college, man. I know I did. It was, it was great. Actually, I actually had an agency. I was signed to a, an agency in Minneapolis. So they helped, you know, they would send me out on auditions and things like that. So. Well, it kind of steered you in the right way. Right. Exactly. They say a lot of people need that. Yeah. Yeah, you do. There's a lot of people out there running blind thinking they're doing something right and they just totally screw up. Yeah. Yeah. Next thing you know, you got the sharks shark circling around. <laughs> yeah. Give me money. Give me money. I'll help you. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I get off on a kick every now and then. <laughs> so then, yeah, I moved to, moved to many or moved actually here to Nashville to write. So well, that was and, the focus. Well, that's what I was, uh, I was curious about because, when is it you actually lost your voice? It was about, I'd been here about five years um, and I'd been writing a little bit and um, I just kind of, I got a lump a little bit and really couldn't sing. And um, Was it overperforming or? No, it was just medically couldn't, had a medical condition and couldn't sing. Oh so, man. Yeah. And that, that's, you know, just, it happens. That's and a seat in the pants kick right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's all, it's, it's interesting when you have an ability and then all of a sudden, you know, you go for some notes and they're gone. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's kind of like, well, I mean, I was just curious cause I, I'm not trying to dredge up crap. If, if, you know, you can, we can pause and go on around this or if you want to, but I was just curious if, uh, 
is it just because you sang so high or could you like sing a lower octave now? Um, at that time I really couldn't sing much at all. Mm. It just, it, it pressed on the vocal cord so much that most of the notes were gone. Yeah. Yeah. So it just, and it took some time to get that, that swelling and that lump to go away. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. It took pretty, it took years. So. Yeah. Cause I had to, I had to have a surgery over here and I had to have a, it was just a big lump of fatty tissue in here and it was just irritating the crap out of me, mm -hmm. you know, and I had to have that out and then I had to go to a rock and pod expo two days later and I passed out in my car. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck, <laughs> you know, and had to have people come rescue me and stuff. And, yeah. uh, I mean, I know it's, it, it's rough, especially when, you know, anything up around in this area, mm -hmm. but to have your vocal cords messed up, you yeah. know, and just be like, that'd be like me losing this voice and going to like a hamster voice or something. You yeah. Know? I just, yeah. It, it would tear me up. Yeah. I, and I know it, it happens to a, a lot of singers, you know, you have some kind of vocal issue or have to take a vocal rest. A lot whatever, of people do. Yeah. Yeah. They've yeah. even got that, uh, that throat spray mm -hmm. for right. people that do the, the gravel metal type yeah. vocals and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't say it. there's some girl out there. Oh, there's actually several girls out there. And I've listened to them, and they're on the the heavy metal scene, and they've got a beautiful melodic voice, mm -hmm. and you're like, "Oh, cool! I can listen to this," you know. And then the next thing you know, they're, rawr, 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 and I'm like, "God, you're screwing something up." Yeah, yeah. You got to be careful with it. I mean, it's yeah, it's you've got to. It's a just like an athlete. You've yeah. Gotta take care of it. So you've got to. Right. All right, we're gonna move on. <laughs> 25 years in marketing and PR. Yes. No, that doesn't mean everybody start calling her going, help, 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 help. <laughs> that has been, I've been lucky enough. That's been my, my day gig. So I've been doing a lot of my marketing and PR for 25 years. You know, that's the bad part about the music industry. Yeah. You always got to have a day gig. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. I talked to, uh, I talked to Sam Brooks. He's an actor mm -hmm. and he's doing real good. He's a young kid. Mm -hmm. And he's still slinging noodles. Yeah. He's at some place down in Hermitage and he cooks noodles up all day long. That's all he does. And that's his day job wow. until he can get a freaking uh, get another movie going. Mm -hmm. But that's what he does. Right. And everybody's got to do that. Some people can't. Back in the 80s, the artist used to take and they would find a girlfriend that had a job. Right. And they could feed them yeah. and they would concentrate on their music. You just can't do that no more. Right. You got too much other stuff to go. Right. Exactly. So now we're down to the main course. Yeah. The book. The book. <laughs> the book. Bound by song. I don't think they say that in Minnesota. Do they? The book. The book. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Is it New York? What is that? Is that Jersey? Where is Jersey, that? Jersey, Jersey, Jersey. The book. The book. <laughs> <laughs> we can say that. Yep. Yeah. I like that. So anyway, everybody that's watching on YouTube, I'm pointing to the book. Bound by song. And we're going to get into this because my assistant has been reading some of it because I apologize. I have been busy. Uh, yes, understandably. <laughs> You've been busy too. We've yes. just been messaging. We ain't even had time to have a phone call. Uh, J.D. Williams wrote a book and it's Bound by Song. And according to my assistant, who's also in love with Harlequin movies, <laughs> she is deeply involved in this book we I, we got it friday and she is already half what three quarter of the way three quarter of the way through this book that's awesome so i mean that is a hell of a compliment yeah well that's fantastic that's awesome yeah, yeah. hopefully Thank everybody you. would do yeah. that <laughs> i know i know <laughs> I know I brought a copy and she's like, I've already read most of it. I was like, oh, <clears throat> okay. That's okay. We're going yeah. to get you to sign the daggone okay. thing. Okay. All right. Happy to. I love it when authors sign books. Yes. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy to. So what got it started? Oh my gosh. See, because I'm, I'm trying to write a treatment for a movie mm -hmm. and I'll write three or four lines and I'm just like a blank. Yeah. I don't see how people can write books. So you've got to tell me this whole process that, that actually got this started. Yeah. And what, what, what process was in your head? Did you just pop up? Was you in the shower one day <laughs> and just think, Oh my God, I'm gonna write a book. Yeah. That's, you know, I, 
I, I, I wasn't singing anymore and I was still wanted to be creative and I had this idea for the story. And it, actually what started writing, I was working on a kid's book. Mm -hmm. I had this idea for, um, I love animals and rescue animals and I rescue dogs. And I'd started this, um, Oh God, I know, I know I went down. Oh that God, you got to buy a farm now. I know. <laughs> well, and I would, and I started this uh, children's book about a rescue dog and, and I just, I loved writing. I wrote in college too. Yeah. And, um, I had this idea about this, these two characters and it was about a reality music show and the female character auditions for the show at an older age and makes it on the show. And so I just started writing it. And this was years ago, back in, I think 2007, 2008. And over the years I just kept working on it. And I had, I had the whole concept of it's a series of books in my head of what I wanted to do. And, um, that's how it started. I just, put my head down one time and just start working on it. Cool. And, yeah. And it's been a lot of work, a lot of just, uh, rewrites and rewrites. And, um, I was, uh, if, lucky enough to work with a really great editor this past two years. Mm -hmm. And, um, she's out of Phil Philadelphia and she's been wonderful of helping just, uh, reframe it a little bit and just help me get it in a, some different directions and just kind of like a structure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I started with the outline of all of the books of what I wanted to do. And, um, she just, it's been great. It's been a great process for the last couple of years, but I, I, I worked on it for I, 20, 2007, 2009. I continued working on it till about 2013 and had a little bit of interest on it. And then that just kind of fell apart. And so mm -hmm. I just quit for a while. I just thought, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. Right. And then, um, during COVID, it, oh, well, yeah. you know, everybody's everybody, got time. Everybody had time. And yeah, <laughs> I had a, a melody for a song in my head, which was He'll Stay, which was inspired by my dad. And then I started thinking about the book. And how, did, just, how did your dad inspire that? Well, the song He'll Stay. See, this is interesting yeah, to me. Yeah. I'm loving so, this. So He'll Stay um, is actually the first uh, verse is basically about my dad. It's it's about him mm. and, the, and the choruses. And I had that chorus in my head and I couldn't get rid of it. And if you're a creative person and you have that, you know, oh yeah, it's driving you, you know, little nuts. Uh, it will drive you insane. It will. And so you've got to, I had to finish it. And so it was during that process of finishing that song. I thought, well, you know, I want to, I want to finish these books. And, um, I brought the books out and that's how I started writing the songs. I brought the other songs out and started finishing more songs to, to go with the book. And, right. and it just, I thought, you know, I'm going to finish this. I'll finish all of it and put it all out together. But, um, this hit the song that was inspired by my dad was what started it all. It's just, I missed, you know, the thing I realized the most is I miss being creative. Yeah. I had, you know, I walked away from it. Mm -hmm. and you just miss it. Yeah. And once you get back into it, you realize, okay, i you need to, you need to still be creative. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I walked away, well, I had this marriage thing, but anyway, <laughs> um, when I walked away from the music industry in 2008, I gave my equipment away. Yeah. Some of it I sold. Yeah. But the rest of it I just gave away because I had like, I had four clubs that owed me over five grand. Wow. And when you go to go to the club and find the guy that you made the deal with and you walk in and you don't see nobody, you don't recognize nobody. Where's so-and-so at? Oh, he closed up shop and left in the middle of the night. Well, there goes that 1200 bucks. Yeah. You know, so uh, it just, it got crazy for me and I just had had enough and I walked away from it and didn't do nothing up until, oh God, say Christmas, June, I think it was June or June live last year. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, everybody kept bugging me. Hey, you need to do a podcast. You need to do this, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, sure. Yeah. It'll give me something to do. Yeah. Started it out for fun. And then I noticed the gear started getting expensive. <laughs> There's that. <laughs> oh yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I just started piecing everything together, man. And I just had to have that creativity. I had to have an outlet Yeah. because I was literally driving myself nuts. I would come home and I'd be in an ill mood and I didn't know why. Yeah. But once I started doing this, everything went away. Mm -hmm. So do you, when you are not creative, do you get the feeling like that? You get like antsy? Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. Especially when I, I'm working on book two now 
uh, yeah. in the series and knowing that I, that's what I wanted to work on. Mm -hmm. And the same with songs, you know, if I have something in my head, I really want to work on or be creative that, that desire, that need to work on it is there. And, uh, and, but it's, it's a, it's a good thing. You know, it's what I want to do right. and work on. And so, um, yeah, it's been, it's been great. So it, are you just doing three books in this series? Yeah. Yeah. In this series, in this series, I've already, I'm already in my head thinking about another. Oh one. Lord, <laughs> I'm on it's based on a character in in this in the series. So yeah, <clears throat> okay. But I got to finish this series first. So yeah. well, I mean, your dad inspired the song. Yeah, yeah, my dad is any of him in the book. Uh, well, there's a character that um, my lead character Julia. There's a mention of her father is in the book. So, okay, yeah. okay. So yeah, loosely based on. Yeah. Well, I was just yeah. curious, yeah. man, because a lot of people, they'll write something based on their own life experiences. Yeah. And that, in, that's not, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then some people will write a book and they'll loosely base it around certain people that they know. And it helps kind of tie the whole story together. Yeah. And that's why I was curious about. Yeah. No, this is yeah, not that. It's more loosely. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Oh, my I was just God. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, are you Julia? Wait a minute now. <laughs> no, <Nope>, I'm not. <laughs> I didn't have her life experiences. Thank God. <laughs> I don't know, uh, Bethany now. She seems like a bad girl. Yeah, she's yeah, she's not the good she's not a good character. Yeah. Is that your twin? No. <laughs> the twin's a good character. <laughs> Man. Yeah. See, I could twist this all kinds I of I know, way. and yeah, no, yeah. I could have so much fun with this. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm going to behave. Okay, I'm going to behave. Nothing will be revealed, sorry. No. no. Yeah. Uh, you didn't put me under NDA. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You need a reader for the book? <laughs> I, yeah, I will, actually. And your assistant's going to be reading the, the next one, so. Oh, yeah. well, cool. Yeah. I'm going to send her a book, too. Ah, uh, Okay. She doesn't know that, but we just, I just informed So what's the title of book two? Book two is Born by Song. Born, Born by, by Song. And okay, you got the bound, bound Born, the Born. And then Blessed by Song. And the Blessed. Right, correct. That sounds like a band name. <laughs> <laughs> bound, Born, and Blessed. That is funny. Well, you mentioned band names. The hardest thing about writing this song or this book, Bound by Song, I had to come up with fake band names. That oh, God. That is one God. of the hardest things to do. You was Googling your butt I off. I was Googling like crazy. <laughs> so the next time I have to do that, I'm going to be coming to you going, help me come up with some fake band names. So you can help me mm. do that because that was brutal. You know, and band names nowadays, they have gotten so, I'm going to use the word creative. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mine weren't that creative. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I seen one the other day. It was a, uh, um, oh God, I can't even, I don't know, I'm not even sure I could uh, pronounce it because I went to Nashville public Davidson County schools. Boom. Um, Orinthian or something like that. Orinthi, I think it is, or, but, Orin, I'm, Orinth, I, but I'm, I'm not pronouncing yeah, it. Yeah. But some of those bands, I mean, they're just like a, a lot of them are delving back into Nordic Vikings mm -hmm. And getting band names there, and I mean, I'm just like, wow. Yeah. And last night, I went and seen Tattered Sons. Yeah, yeah. And I always, I thought that was an interesting name. But then I get there, and none of their clothes are tattered. <laughs> <laughs> Did you mention that to them? No, Say I hey. haven't. Yeah. I'm sure they'll hear this. Yeah, though. okay, good. Well. Because they actually turned in and being fans of the show. That's pretty cool, oh, yeah. man. Yeah, good. And they gave me a, they gave me a shout out. Last night, because I showed up, they were tickled yeah. to death because I was there. And I'm yeah. just like, man, I'm, I was just not, you know, I was happy to be there. Yeah. And they did one song for me on the show. It was acoustic. And the guitar player put it together the night before. The singer did not know until they were actually driving over here. And the guitar player called him and said, hey, we're doing acoustic. And Tim, the, the singer, was like, what? <laughs> okay. What are we doing? I okay. guess we are. Yeah. So I when I was doing mic yeah. check on them, yeah. that's when they did the song, you know. And uh, That's great. They ran through it one time. And I was just like, man, I wished I was recording then, you know. And they did it the second time for the show. And it was just awesome. 
And I just, I do love going out and seeing people. Yeah. yeah. If you were still able to perform, mm -hmm. I would go see you. Yeah. Okay. Well, if I'm ever, if I ever, you know, put that on my bucket list again, then I'll, well, I'll let you know. <laughs> well, no, I mean, yeah. if you do, uh, Oh, well, I mean, yeah. this book, this book has been out how long now? Uh, actually, it was the last day in January. So really the beginning of February. Oh, you're months. still fresh with yeah, this. Yeah, it's very, very new. You've yeah. done any book signings yet? I haven't. So if I'm ever doing that, I'll, you'll be the first person I call. Hey, yeah. I'll be there. Okay. I'll be in the back with the Jaren section. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Me, me and the roadie will be back there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, God. My two fans. I love it. Yeah. That's awesome. He's liable to whip my ass later. <laughs> <laughs> So this is all based on a character that you made up in your head. Mm -hmm. No relation to anybody. Correct. Julia Tate. Julia Tate. I actually love that name. Yeah. I mean, it just kind of rolls. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a good performer name. Yeah. 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 And she's a singer. Yeah. Singer songwriter. Singer songwriter. Yeah. She writes her own material. Cool. Mm -hmm. We can't give a whole lot away because we want people to buy this book. Y'all have got to buy this book. According to my assistant, like I said, she's three quarters away inside this book already, and she's loving it. Little Miss Harlequin. Um, <laughs> hey, we need to get Thomas a copy. I wonder if Thomas would buy, would buy one. I've got. Yeah, he I've, can borrow yours. I, okay, I can, I can give you one. I've got another one. <laughs> no, no, no. How much are you selling them for? Well, their paperback are eight ninety nine on Amazon, but um, they're two ninety nine. But if they're free with Kindle Unlimited, oh, so, cool! Yeah, so we can I can sell one to Thomas for fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we yeah, give yeah. Tom we give Thomas a hard time, man. He 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 works his butt off, but I still give him a hard time. I don't care. That's awesome. So, are you carrying on the trilogy? Yes. All the characters going to carry on, or are you just going to carry on the certain key ones? Uh, well, Julie. Is it going to be, you yeah, know, well, interjecting and all it, that stuff? Though some of them will interject. Yeah. and But the main characters, Julia Tate and um, Rain Wagner, mm -hmm. uh, will continue on. Yeah. But there'll be some new characters and some old characters. And Now, how many songs are you doing per book? Uh, this first book has two songs. There's another song that I need to record. Mm -hmm. And it, actually two songs. And then um, the two songs I've already recorded will be in, in the next two books. And then I'll have to wait and see how many other songs I do in the, in the um, next two books. Okay. I haven't quite fleshed that out. I haven't quite finished that one yet. But Oh, you're still up in the air I'm on still, it. I'm still up in the air on, on the songs. Oh, God. But yeah, I don't, know. Don't you write in she had to go do a podcast. Don't. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. The songs are kind of happening as I'm finishing the book the yeah. second book is finished the third book is not quite finished but the second book is finished i don't know that might be pretty good julia had to go to a podcast because her pr person throwed her into the world of podcasting <laughs> it happens yeah so that's true life right there yeah, it is <laughs> you're regretting ever answering my email no, aren't you not at all <laughs> not at all <laughs> I'm out of notes, so we're winging it from now on, kid. Okay, all right. So well, we're, what's going on in your head? Well, we're just finishing up these books and writing new songs, and everybody can go to jdwilliamsbooks.com. That's where all the material is and more information. And I've got all my, my Facebook and Instagram are on those on on that page, right. jdwilliamsbooks.com, the website. And that's also for everybody that does – my YouTube and listens to the podcast, all of her links will be in there for y'all. Y'all will be able to click on them. No, you cannot have her phone number. <laughs> <laughs> I have a YouTube page too. Um, the songs that are, so the song lyrics that are featured in the book, I am recording, recording, there are mm -hmm. recordings of them. And then I'm, you know, I play some of them live. I'll, you know, make YouTube recordings and so you can kind of hear what they, what they sound like. So that's a little different with a book. You know, yeah. some people are doing that, um, but to actually have, the song lyrics in the book that you can hear, you know, hear what they sound well, like. Well, I mean, yeah. you're talking about that and I'm sitting here thinking, and it's just an idea went off of my head and they, they might be able already to actually do this. I'm not sure. But I was thinking, like you said, on Kindle where, you know, you download it, 
and you can read the book. What if you got to a certain spot in the book and then the song played in behind it while you're reading the book? Mm -hmm. That's a great. And there's, I've just read that somebody was doing a, like a playlist in a book and yeah. actually have QR codes and that I'm thinking I need to, to do that exact thing. So I think that's a great idea. Yeah, that would be yeah, awesome. Have actually. a whole lot of like have your music right there with you yeah. and you can hear what and feel because to me. Because I could add that. Yeah. And, and this is just the way I was raised. My mom and, and everybody around me was always big. Read a book. Mm -hmm. And the whole slogan through school and everything, the public library and everything was, it's a movie in your mind. Right. So if you've got the movie in your mind and then the soundtrack. Right. Kicks in right when, I mean, that would be awesome. Yeah. That's a great idea because I have two songs in this, in this book already that I could add. Hang on. Copyright. <laughs> no. Copyright. I know. I think there's, yeah. We're going to talk about this. <laughs> we just made a lot of money right there. Did you know I, that? I know. I know. Yeah. I got to figure it out. You definitely do. Yeah. We're going to have to figure that out. That would be awesome though. Yeah. I mean, I could just picture it. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Now I'm going to want, to, I'm gonna really want, going to want to read the book now. <laughs> I am tongue tied. Give me, hey, would you give me a water, please? You want a water? I would love some more. Yeah. You want some more? Yeah. Or you want a good cold one? I want a good cold one because this one's warm. So I want <clears> some <throat> of your special water. I My special like water? Yeah. I like special water. <laughs> actually, these, these are actually, uh, Purity Dairy helps oh. us out with the show. Oh, that's awesome. And, uh. They give us oh, water and cool. stuff. And, you know, to be honest with you, I didn't even know Purity Dairy made water. I don't think I'd do that either. You don't see it hardly in the stores. But it's actually really good. Yeah. Spring water. It is. I didn't know that they did that. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take a... Oh, go ahead. Drink. I'll take the camera off of you. That makes you feel better. Everybody can look at me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Some people don't like to be on air when they drink. Chris Turner did a shot. He didn't care. <laughs> I was going to stop and say, drink water. <laughs> yeah. You know what started that, though? What? Mark Hat was on the show. And um, we were talking back and forth, you know, and, and I was trying to get some of the stuff out of him. And uh, he got to singing. And one of his songs is Just Another Shot. And it's all about you know, the usual, right. get the girl off your mind, you know? Right. And, uh, I love the song mm -hmm. and it had me wanting to take a shot. Yeah. <laughs> so we did a shot and it just, uh, I was hooked on that song for like three weeks. Yeah. I don't know what it was. Chemical imbalance. Probably. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. <laughs> so now we're going to get hooked on purity water shots. <laughs> <laughs> Could be worse. Could be. <laughs> so how long, when's the next book coming out? Uh, this year. That's the goal here, 2023. So and that's Born by Song. The, yeah, Born by Song, probably the end of the year. I was hoping to have both of them out this year, but probably uh, Blessed by Song will be 2024. Oh, man. Yeah, because it's. Well, you got to drop them one a year. That'd be good. Yeah. I was trying to drop them both this year, but probably it'll be early 2024. All so, right, cool. Yeah. It's a that lot is sweet. of editing work. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah. Still pushing. And it, but I could talk. Bound by you could talk. I couldn't talk while ago. <laughs> I'd have purity water to I make know, me talk. I know. It's, it's doing well. <laughs> I'm getting some great reviews. So I'm really excited about that. And um, uh, it's been really exciting. It's well, exciting what I was to, get that, to get that pushed out there. And Yeah, because me and you was talking about algorithms and all that other stuff. Yeah. Uh, like on Kindle and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you have the whole analytics yeah. and all that stuff on it yeah so how, how are they doing uh, pretty really well yeah so i can i can see um so i have it on a couple of platforms goodreads mm -hmm. is doing really well and um then kindle is where i'm or amazon's where i'm focused now yeah and uh, and seeing how many pages kindle unlimited you see how many pages are being read and so right. yeah and so it's starting to starting to really pick up and that's great when I mean, you can see um, people are reading it and then, uh, people are reviewing it and it's really exciting, you know, to put something mm -hmm. out there and to see, uh, people respond to it. I mean, I was yeah. so excited just to have one person read it. Well, and that's what blew yeah. my mind, you know, because yeah. on the podcast, I can see the analytics on it through yeah. Buzzsprout and it blows me away that so many people 
like there was countries that I couldn't pronounce, Mm -hmm. you know, and in the UK and Taiwan, and there was actually two downloads in China and I didn't even know they were allowed, you know, and it just blows my mind that people actually want to listen to the show. Yeah. So I can imagine you and I mean, you're like looking at the analytics, probably as happy as I am. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, my first written review, it was just, it was, yeah. That someone took the time to write about it. Yeah. And it was really good and how much she loved it. It was just, wow. Does it it's make just, you feel wow. warm? Yeah. Yeah. Warm does, and fuzzy, it does. man. It, make, it does. It, it Because that someone took the time to write that they enjoyed it or that they mm-hmm. really liked it and took the time to read it. It's, it's pretty amazing. Oh, but, yeah. Especially when like, you know, you've worked like you have for a long time to put something together and then someone responds. I mean, it makes it all worth it. Oh, it's yeah. All those years and... And all of it really, really worth it. Yeah. So it's and great. Like you said. Yeah. Yeah. And with the analytics on YouTube, you know, I can actually see, cause I was curious if Kendall was the same way. Cause, uh, on the YouTube analytics, you can actually see how many times somebody's clicked on it, but you can also see how long they watched it yeah. and to sit there and see that they've actually watched it longer mm-hmm. instead of just a click through. Yeah. And I'm just like blown away by it. Yeah. So th- this is a cool, I yeah, love I this detail, outlet. But yeah. I would, I can see pages. So that, and that's pretty, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying, you're saying you love what? I just love the, the feeling you get from it. You know, yeah. you, the, the creativity part and it's paying off. Right. People are looking at it. People are reading it. Right. I love it. Yeah. The same thing with, as a songwriter, mm-hmm. people like you're saying in different countries or just wherever in the U S that you see. So I've, I've one song, the one about my that's inspired by my dad. I have someone listening to it in Canada every week. Wow. And when you see that, it's just, uh, it's, I, it blows my mind. I can see this little town in Canada that yeah. listens to that song. And that to me is just like, wow, that, that means, uh, that means so much oh, yeah. as a writer. Yeah. Cause, Cause you're giving somebody comfort through song. Right. right. I love that. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Just like you said, it's that, that is, that's, it's so great to see that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Yeah. And I'm really, I'm seriously going to read your book. I'm seriously going to <laughs> read your know, book. I don't know. It's one of those. Uh, you can kind of ask anybody. Hallmark kind of, you know. You can bit. ask anybody. When I make a promise on this air that I'm okay, going to do good. something, I stick to it. Great. No, I'm not giving no money away. <laughs> see? Okay. See? I got too many people around me. Hey, you want to go fishing? <laughs> Rody said, sure. <laughs> I'm sure he would. I'm sure he would. All right. Well, Miss J.D. Williams, we certainly do appreciate you being here. And I'm going to give you the camera. Boom. Tell everybody, please, all your little sites. They can go to jdwilliamsbooks.com and find the Facebook and Instagram sites. But I'm also on J.D. Williams Music on YouTube uh, Instagram is JD Williams Books Official, and Facebook is JD Williams Music. But again, jdwilliamsbooks.com to find all the information. So thank awesome. You. Yeah. I really appreciate you coming. This has been so much fun. It has. It's been a blast. So thank you so much. And you're welcome back anytime. I would love to come back. All right. So we're going to get out of here. We appreciate it. And remember, everybody, I don't know why I keep doing this because I never put it in the editing part. But like, share, subscribe, do whatever. Go check out J.D. Williams and all her stuff. Buy her book. Help support all the fine arts out there because there's a lot of good people out there doing and working the best they can to be creative and put things out there for your enjoyment and that you like. So y'all take care, and we'll see y'all later. See you. Bye. And that's a wrap.